Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another special J Talk podcast. My name is Stuart Smith, and you can see again, I have another very special guest. I am joined by the one and only Cicinho. Cicinho, how are you? Okay. Thank you for thank you for inviting me to this to this program. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. I should tell the um, the people who are watching and listening to this that uh, I've known CC since his time uh, since his time in Gifu, and um, I think he has some very uh, interesting things to to talk about on uh, on Japanese football and the J League. Um, but first of all, CC, you are back in Spain now, right? Yes, I arrived on Christmas Day now with my family, my wife, and my daughter. How's the weather there? Is it nice? It's cold. It's cold. I mean, uh, the wife wife hometown is Valladolid, and it's <laughs> a really cold city. One of the one of the biggest coldest city in in Spain. <laughs> um, Cici, let's start then. So, when you first came to Japan to the J League to play football, you had played in. Um, many different countries. You played in, obviously, Spain, uh, Korea, uh, Greece. Like, when you, uh, how did your transfer to Japan and Gifu? How did that happen? Was that? Did you lead that? Was a was an agent involved? Tell us the process. How it happened? Well, the process was a little bit long because, uh, well, I was playing in in Spain. I had many injuries. And uh, when I played in Spain six years in first division, four years in second division, and my last year was in second division with Osasuna. And I have uh, many injuries, two years injury with the knee. I didn't recover. So I thought, well, it's my time. If I cannot play in first division in Spain, maybe it's time to leave. So I start to watch uh, some soccer from other countries, from Poland, from Greece, of course, from uh, Germany, these countries, but I know I knew on that moment, I didn't have chance in the in the first on the in the best championship, like Premier League, like Bundesliga, hmm. like France League. Of course, I knew that, and I said, okay, in which country I can go? That is a country who adapt my my life. Who can I like? It's a country like I like the country, not only the soccer. And I love Japan from time ago when I was young. I had interest on on the culture, on the people, how they live how they have this day by day. I wanted to, to live that, uh, that experience, but I didn't know the Saka was, was good, to be honest. Mm. I thought this was a poor Saka. So I had a, a friend who was living in Valladolid and uh, he said, oh, Sisi, we have to watch some game together. So it was, it was like a long time ago. And that game was Avispa Fukuoka, home i didn't remember the, the opponent maybe it was urawa maybe it was some big club the stadium was full nice mm. stadium uh, it's a Vispa stadium mm. the environment was good and the soccer was good so i was really surprised and i said hey why why not i have to go to japan at least i have to try so on that moment i call it like osasuna's manager he is now in getafe the sports director he was uh, who picked up me from Bayaulik to Osasuna. Mm. So I asked him if he knows someone who can help me with uh, with this situation because I really wanted to go to Japan. So he said, "Okay, I know one one girl who was working with Stoikov, and we have a really good uh, relation. So I'm gonna give you her number. You can call her, and maybe at least if I can, if she can help you, she is gonna help you." So I called the. Um, yeah. I didn't remember. I didn't remember the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, she sent me like uh, now she's not working in Japan, but she has really good connection. It was GSP. Mm. I don't know. If... Yeah, it's a football agency. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So I spoke with the uh, Nishimata, not the boss. The uh, I guess uh, someone who is who is living in in Germany. So I I spoke with him and I said, hey. I don't, I don't, um, I don't care about the money. I don't care about nothing. I just won't go to Japan. <laughs> so if you have that, please. Also, by by this way, I spoke with uh, two more managers. Like they have some small connection with Japan, and I said to them the same. I really won't go to Japan. 
I didn't care at that moment. It was J3, J2, J1. I really wanted to go to Japan because I was young. I was 28. So I thought if I can go to Japan, even J3, I know it's, it's really a strange that the one player who plays in Spain on that level wants to go to Japan, even J3. But I really want it. So finally, Nishimata uh, has some contact with Kifu. Mm. And when I was in Greece, they said me, okay, you have this chance. And I didn't thought, I didn't thought even three seconds. I said, okay, of course. And that, that, that was the, the way, well, a little bit shorter, was longer than, than I'm telling now. But mm. was that, and I was really happy to arrive to Japan. So <clears throat> when you arrived, obviously your, your, first, um, your first club was Gifu. When you arrived in, in Gifu and saw the stadium and saw the, the training facilities, what was your feeling? Was it like you expected? Was it better? Was it worse? Like, how did you feel when, when you arrived? There are two, three different feelings. First about Japan, because I was in Japan with my, with my wife. On that time was my girlfriend mm. in Tokyo. Mm. Before that, I was living in Korea. So I was, it was amazing. I said, wow, what a city, what a country. I, I thought, I want to live in Japan. But you know, of course, my wife said to me, Tokyo is only Tokyo. Maybe other cities are not similar than Tokyo. So when I arrived to Tokushima first, to Tokushima to give first time about the city, it was everything amazing because it was everything, every building, every isakaya, every, <laughs> every bar was absolutely different with Spain. So it was lovely and I was really happy only to see that. But also I thought, wow, Gifu is not Tokyo. <laughs> don't have this big building, don't have this traffic, don't have these big people living here. Mm. It was the first feeling about the life. But I said, oh, I can adapt. I have no problem. Second feeling about the stadium, about the, the facilities, I knew like we cannot compare Japan with, mm. uh, with Europe. Because of the history, right? In, mm. in, mm. in, in Europe, we are playing soccer 100 years, 110 yes. years. Mm. Japan is really recently, really new sport. So they cannot stay in the, same, in the same level, I knew. So I had no problem on that. But I have to be honest, first training, when I arrived to Gifu, was really snow, was really white. So first day, we couldn't have training. Ah, uh, yeah. And then we couldn't have training. So we run around the stadium. We make some, um, some like exercise with Okisam. <laughs> and maybe today, like we could uh, have the first training. So we arrived to the first training with Okisam. He put some videos about his philosophy, about how he wants to play Saka. And I thought, wow, what a coach. This coach is, is really in Japan, this coach, because he knew everything about uh, Spain. He knew some players that even Spanish players that not, doesn't know. Mm. So I was listening to listen to him. Well, and the first training start. And well, I thought during the training was a little bit long. I was mm. a little bit the trip, everything, you know, you cannot sleep when you arrive to Japan. Everything was expected for me. <laughs> the first training was really long. And was the interpreter. And well, I thought in the, in the middle of the training, I asked him, for me was, I felt like it was really long. I said, hey, how many hours we are having training? And he said, okay, two hours, 20 minutes on that moment. And I was really tired. And I said, okay, I thought in five minutes, maybe we'll, we will finish in 10 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes. I don't know. I was really tired. So the trainings continues. And I was... After maybe one more hour, I asked again to the interpreter, we are not going <laughs> to Really, we are not going to finish. Mm -hmm. So finally, the training was end. Four hours, 40 minutes. First training with Okisan. I couldn't run. I couldn't move. So when I was in the sour, I was thinking, wow, maybe Japan is not my country. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe everything was, was not the best option to me. So only on that moment in Japan, I thought, like, I really like Kokai, right? Mm, like, I, mm, 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 mm. Like, wow, it's not my country. It's not, it's not going to be good for me. Only on that moment, because the first training was really long, four <laughs> hours, 25 minutes. When in Spain, it's one hour, 20 minutes, one hour, mm. 40 minutes, like maximum two hours. 
So only in that moment I thought, wow, Japan is not for me. <laughs> oh, it's gonna kill me. I came for some injuries. So uh -huh. I said, well, if I can keep this training, if I don't get injury again, maybe I can play against Saka. <laughs> <laughs> so you joined at the same time as um, our ex-goalkeeper, Victor uh, Ibanez. Is it, did, did he feel the same? Yeah, he felt the same, but well, he is goalkeeper. They don't run too much, as you uh, know. Yeah, goalkeepers just keep themselves and they don't do so much running, right? <laughs> That moment, I remember when uh, Kif, when Victor asked me because I signed with Kifu, and maybe one week later, something like that, mm. Victor sent me a message by Instagram. Mm. He wasn't he wasn't sure about coming to Japan because he didn't know nothing about soccer, about Japanese soccer. Mm. He no, but he thought like maybe he was grown to come to Japan from second division B, mm. and I said. Oh, you have to come to Japan. It's a really good opportunity. It's a really good chance. You cannot imagine. The level is good. Everything is good. The fans love to go to the stadium. There are a lot of people always with a uniform. This is really love from, from soccer, from soccer play, because I won't play soccer for people. Mm. So I said, Vito, you have a really big chance. And he wasn't sure. And it was his wife who said, Vito, we have to go there. Ah. And when Japan, after two, three months, he said to me, Sissy, I'm agree with you. It's a big chance. I thought like it wasn't a big chance. It wasn't mm. like a not, not a steep, uh, not the one more steep. Mm. It was like going back. And no, go to Japan. I think it's the biggest, it was a big step for, for Victor. Mm, it was. And but he's he's had an excellent season with uh, Sagami Hara and he's moved to, where has he moved? Montedio Yamagata, I think. Yeah, a great move for him. Um, I think, yeah, he's done really well. I think, I just want to ask you, because you obviously, obviously, at the same time as you joined, um, Oki-san, Takeshi Oki, was a new coach for, for Gifu as well. Like, did you talk to him obviously through um, Kimura-san, the interpreter, did you talk to him and kind of, did you tell him your ideas about football and he told you his ideas and that you kind of matched together? Well, after, uh, before I go to Japan, uh, it wasn't this, uh, this meeting on this, uh, this door, no. After, after I arrived to Japan, mm. yes, I have uh, some meeting with, uh, with Oki-san, because he can speak a little bit English. My English mm. is also not good, but he can speak English. Mm. So sometimes it's really nice to speak with him without interpreter. And when I, he told me like his idea, I, I was really lovely. I was like in love with his idea. In love, mm. not only even about life. So for me, every every time he, has, he has spoke and the interpreter was translating, mm. for me it was, wow, what a coach. I want to make some, something big with this coach, with this mm. idea, with philosophy. And after now, uh, four years and since I arrived to Japan, I thought I was really lucky. Because mm. on that moment, especially on that moment, four years ago, most of the team was like defensive team. On that moment, four years ago, now the, the soccer is changing. Also, mm. the Japanese coaches are changing the mentality. But on that, on that days, most of the teams, most of the coach was like defensive coach. So I was really lucky I arrived to Japan and not arrive to, I don't want to speak bad about other teams, of course, only it's about the idea. Like for example, on that time, Yamaguchi or Matsumoto. If I arrived to Matsumoto or Renofa or Avispa that I love Avispa, mm. I could succeed because it wasn't my football, it wasn't my philosophy. But mm. I was arrived to Gifu on Gifu was Okisan. Was I really well, I'm really grateful to I don't know to God or to the life to give me this chance. I remember I remember watching the I think the first game that you played and the uh, Oki was manager I think was at home against Renofa Yamaguchi. Yeah. I I think it was a draw. I don't think I don't think Gifu won. But I watching that game and I know that. Uh, m most of the supporters in the stadium as well had the same feeling like we we hadn't seen 
anything like that. Gifu had always been um, a team that struggled, that weren't so good, that weren't so technical. And that first game, so I remember you, Shoji Yoshihiro, and Nagashima Yushi as well were in the midfield. Omoto Yuki, <laughs> Furuhashi, <laughs> Mr. Furuhashi on the on the left hand side. I remember thinking, wow, that that this has the potential to be a really really good team. Did did you feel like maybe in preseason or maybe after that first league game? Did you think, oh, we have a we have a good we have a good team here? I felt the first training I was in uh, in Gifu because I thought like Furuhashi, Yusi, Paolo, Koya. Yeah. I see really like talented player, like mm. really, really good pass, really good idea. So I thought I don't know if this is the Japanese, the average Japanese level, mm. but I was surprised. I thought, well, my technique is I'm not better than this player. I have other better things, mm. but. See control pass, control pass, something like that, only in the training. You cannot say, hey, CC is really much better than this player. I didn't have, I didn't have that feeling. On that moment, I thought, hey, CC, if you re- if you don't play good, if you don't uh, make big effort in training, you are not going to be a member on, on that team. Mm. So, on, I was really happy with that team. Mm. How way we played, we wanted the ball, always with ball, is like, the team, the game is going to be on our side. If we play good, we can win everything. But on the first game with Renault Fayama, which was 2-2. It was, yeah. It was. So it starts the game. And first half, first half is not. First 30 minutes, we played really bad. We was mm. losing 0-2. Mm, mm, mm. What is this team? We played in precision really good. And the first, the first game, we are playing really bad. Terrible. But after the first 30 minutes, we start to play good. Mm. We made a Subasa score in a free kick. Yes. One, yes. And start the second half. We have a, a lot of big chance. And after UC got the 2 2. Yes. Mm-hmm. And after that, well, the, the game finishes 2 2. But I thought, wow, it's a really good team. I don't know if we are going to win many games, but, mm. but we are enjoying a lot. And we did. Mm. So what's the difference then? Like, so <clears throat> for you playing in that team, you say that you you felt it was a good team, but you weren't sure if Gifu could win so many games. So what's the difference between playing well and not kind of getting the results that the play deserved in that Gifu team? Well, for that, uh, on that Gifu team, really, I thought that maybe the first 10 games we deserve win maybe eight, nine, maybe do remember with Renofa, we deserve with mm. the first game, we deserve. Mm. But we had, we had a problem. Well, we have many problems, that's why we didn't win. But like a game, like a game, you want you see Gifu and you thought, wow, what a team. But if you don't have the control in the two areas, you cannot win many games. On that, on that moment, we have a lot of chance, but we didn't score because mm. for some. I don't score many goals. Tanaka, like Paolo, he can win many games alone. Well, mm. Tanaka, we have to make like one episode from him. You, because he's- I, you love, I, I should tell, I should tell um, all, the, all the listeners on the viewers that you love Paolo. I, I really do. Mm. And I'm disappointed with myself and I'm a little bit disappointed with Japan. And I'm a little bit disappointed with Paolo because he has talent. He has things that the Japanese player doesn't have. Mm. Like driving really easy. He can score goals. He's he's powerful. He has power. Mm. And Japanese players can run around, but there are, there are not many Japanese players with, with many power like you can see in Europe. But mm. Tanaka has these things. And maybe you can ask me, what is the bad thing from Tanaka? Maybe the mind. He's, <laughs> Paolo looks confident, mm. but he He's not. You see, that's. I find that really. I find that really strange because his personality is so big. Like he, he wants to be. Oh, I don't. Well, I don't know if he wants to be. He, but he is usually 
the center of what people are are looking at and his personality is is very unique <laughs> i think but what he's a bit shy sometimes he is not shy but he needs to be the focus on the people because he has not confidence in himself in his personality in his game this is my opinion mm. this is my Paolo was a little bit, not a little, he was really different from Japanese players. Mm. Maybe Japanese players, they, they always run a lot. They always give 100% for the team. Paolo was a little bit different, more like Brazilian style, European style, a little bit, okay, I want to do my game. Yeah. I don't want to, <clears throat> but after I'm going to win games. But when he got some comment, some uh, like, Paolo, you have to go, you have to do, you have to do. He was getting like smaller and smaller. Ah, I see. Mm. His problem, but he has to say, hey, I'm really good playing soccer because he's really good. I can win games. Mm. I can have games. But he needs a coach who trusts him a lot. Mm. And Oki, I love him a lot. Doesn't trust a lot, Paolo. That's why mm. when we were, we were losing games, Paolo was in the bench. Yeah, yeah. In the, I don't know if you remember the first game. Paulo Tanaka wasn't on the eight, on the eighteen. He was on the bench. Oh, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. The right back was Tamori, I guess, and Tamori got injury. Yes. So yeah. Omoto was a right winger. Yes, 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 yes. He was. Yeah. Inside, Omoto came like a, like Miki Miki back in the side back. Mm -hmm. Paulo Tanaka was like wing back. Win uh, like uh, like win that, mm. and Paolo came to the game. Everything changed. He can change a game. He can win a game by himself. Mm. But I want the coach who trust him and say, "Okay, Paolo, you have to do this, and this you, you don't have to do." But mm. I coach who say to him, "You are really good." Mm. And you no, know, I'm I wasn't close to Lotina, but we arrived on the same time to Japan. Mm, yes. Have a dinner after maybe three months. The first time I met him, he's really kind. He <laughs> has maybe the first time when you see him in the bed, always serious, always <laughs> like. Yeah. <laughs> but face face to face, mm. he is kind, and he is like always making joking. Maybe you don't trust him. <laughs> no, that's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I, I want to say like for Lotina always wanted Paolo in his team. He wanted Paolo in his team. When Lotina, when he arrived to Cerezo, mm. I spoke with him, and he wanted to take Paolo to Cerezo. No way. <laughs> and he said to me, if Paolo come to me, it's going to be one of the biggest surprises in the J-League. And I really wanted oh. to really take Paolo. I really wanted Paolo goes with Lotina. Oh, now now I'm disappointed. I wanted to see Paolo in in J1 with with Latina. That's because Paolo now he signed for Matsumoto Yamaga, I think, and I think Matsumoto this year will have a will have a good team, and hopefully he can, yeah, hopefully he can. I don't know, show his potential for a a, a good team because that would be good. Because Gifu, and then yeah, he went to Renofa, and I was very surprised at that one. I was very surprised he went to Renefer because I thought he could go to a better team, but maybe this year he can show his potential. I want to speak. Uh, Kyogo Furuhashi is a star. We'll come on to him in a minute. My, and I think I've told you before, one of my regrets for Gifu is that Omoto Yuki didn't become the same as Kyogo Furuhashi. I think personally, Omoto had the same talent, but he just got, I think he's, his injuries were, were too bad when he went to, to Tokushima. For people, because maybe a lot of people don't know Omoto Yuki. Now he's a Alberex Niigata. But that first season at Gifu, he was outstanding. He was one of the best players that I'd ever seen at Gifu. And playing with him, Every time you got the ball and you look to your right, you must have seen Omoto just go 
he was a he was fantastic that season, wasn't he? He was fantastic. He was amazing. Mm. He was amazing. But for me, Omoto, we spoke about the confidence, and he has zero confidence in him. Yeah. Mm. Zero is zero. When he arrived to Takushima, well, for me, what's the best position to, for Omoto, in your opinion? Mm. Uh, I th not defensive. I thought he was best on a maybe right wing, I think. Like for you, me, his pace. Mm. Right, like a right winger. He can make a really good job. He can yeah. score and make a dribbling. But mm. for me, he needs a space. For me, his best moment was when Paulo got the ball. And you see from behind Omoto running up. So no one could stop him. No oh, one could. I, mm, he was crazy fast. Unstable. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but really, but he needs a space. When he gets the ball, mm. he doesn't. He can do good, but not in his hundred percent. Mm. So he has talent. He has everything to to succeed in Japan. Mm. To J One Club. Well, he arrived to Nagasaki mm. after. Ah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. it wasn't his style. Mm. Also, he arrived to Tokushima. Well, we didn't play like Gifu, and also we were playing with three defender, like two winger, full winger. Yeah. Mm. It's not. For me, in this, when the team play with 4-4-2, 4-3-3, he played like, like a back. Yeah, right back. With, right back. Mm. But, but not defensive right back. If he mm. goes to yeah. who has to defend, he's not good defend. He's mm. terrible. To <laughs> he's getting better because he is young. And he mm. was level. I remember that year from the first game to the last game, he improved a lot. Mm. A lot. Mm. He needs a team who has the ball and he needs a space and he needs he needs to run because when he runs, nobody can stop him. No one. <laughs> but he has to to choose better the team. Mm. One, mm. I know when when he had this offer from Nagasaki, you know, I was talking with him because he was in Tokushima. Mm. And I know it's not my it's not the my the best team for me but mm. this year, and everyone can play want to play in J1. Mm. So he does, but I want him to think. And maybe he is 24 now. Maybe he has to do one step back. Mm. Go to go to Oki's style. Go to one team who has this style. Mm. Go to one team who the coach trust him. Mm. This Make make this back step, mm. and after that, again take confidence and play on his level because mm. you know his level, you show his level. Yeah, and I didn't see that level in other right back, even from day one. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I uh, I thought I thought he had the potential to be a national team player. I thought I thought he was the 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 new style right-sided defender winger like hybrid he was just he was phenomenal he was so good like on the on the other side on the left you played with uh Kyogo Furuhashi who is now well he's a he's a superstar in Japan but you played with him in his debut season so he was straight from a university into Gifu's side in that first season in the season you played together did you feel that there was something special with Kyogo if I'm honest I felt you know if maybe if I don't feel I, I say you but I felt mm. I felt Kyogo and with Paulo and on that moment after three after three months I spoke with my manager I said hey I don't know if he can succeed in Europe but he's really good player because mm. he was really good. And everyone who watched our game, maybe maybe could feel like, wow, mm. this player is different. Mm. He can do more things. He can run. He yeah. can press. He can jump. He can make a dribbling. He can score. But on that time, he could, he wasn't, he didn't score many times, I guess. Mm. Mm. 
but he had a big potential. First yeah. year in professional football, and he did that stuff. He was amazing. And you know what I surprised? Okay, Kyogo Furuhashi, first time in uh, first year in, in Japan, first year in professional soccer, and finished that year. And I thought, okay, one team from J1 is going to take him. Mm. So I, was, I was a little bit surprised. Like, if I'm a sport director from J1 team, and I see four games from Gifu, mm. and I see Kyogo's level, and I see his age, I see his potential, mm. I have to take him. And for me, it was amazing that one J team or the top J2 team didn't pick up him. Mm. It was a surprise for me. I thought, wow, I don't understand Japanese soccer. I don't understand <laughs> Japanese sports director. Mm. What are you thinking to don't take Furuhashi on that, on that moment? Because mm. uh, after his debut season, of course, you went to Tokushima, Ma. Omoto went to Tokushima. Shoji went to Sendai. Sendai, Sendai. maybe yeah. But yeah, no one, <laughs> no one took Kyogo. And as a as a Gifu supporter, I was I was very happy. But maybe the same feeling as you. I was like, well, if people come to watch Gifu, surely they must notice the number eleven just flying down. The, the left hand side. Are you? You said you you felt he had potential. Are you surprised at how good he has become? Because now he's well, he's Iniesta's best friend, and but he is playing at a level that's so high, um, not just in the J League but in Asia as well. Are you surprised how high he's gone, or is it just natural with his? like his talent and his potential? I didn't know where, where was his limit, mm. but I think Kyogo Furuhashi is uh, like uh, trespassing every limit <laughs> with him. Mm. Because I thought, okay, he can play in J1, but I didn't know he's gonna go maybe to the one of the best team, or best team, best club with mm. a lot of, yeah. with, uh, with Iniesta, with Samper, with uh, amazing players. And he's Habit gonna- Villa. yeah. Who could say that? Now one. Now one. And he was the best player with Villa, with Podolski, with <laughs> yes. yeah. And if you, if you watch it, like a, a Kobe's game, the mm. best was Kyogo. Oh, of course. And yeah. Mm. Now, now one could say that on that moment. Everyone said, okay, he's going to be good. But how good he is well, was difficult to imagine. Was really difficult to imagine. I know he's... He's learning Spanish. I, I know that. I know he's learning to speak Spanish. Like, do you think that Spain is a uh, a realistic place for him to to play football? I think Kyo can adapt to every football. I don't know. Maybe with England because they are really strong. But I guess if mm. he goes, he can succeed even in England. He can go to Bundesliga. Different football from Spain. Different football from from Japan. He can go to every country. Mm. And he's gonna. I guess because he can do many things. Mm. Many things. He can play in a defensive team because he was a lot and he's fast for the yeah. contract. Mm. He can play with a team who who beat up, who play like like Kobe or like uh, Gifu on that moment because he has technique. Mm. And he knows football. He 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 knows how to do. He can play in many different teams. So I guess he's going to succeed even if he goes to Mexico, to Argentina, to Spain or to England. So, yeah, I, th I think so. I think he can play. I think he can play anywhere because he's got hard work. He's got three things. He's a hard worker. He's very, very fit. I, I don't see him get injured very often. And he'll just and he's very clever. He can adapt to very different situations after Gifu. You went to work for, work for, play for <laughs> Ricardo Rodriguez at Tokushima. Um, we spoke a little bit before we started recording here uh, about Rodriguez, but from your feel, uh, from when you played for, for Tokushima, like, why is he such a good coach? What, what does he give to players? And obviously, I don't think you're surprised that 
he won the championship with Tokushima. Like, what are his good qualities as a coach? Well, for me, he has one really good quality. It's not as a coach, but it helps a lot. But for me, he's an amazing person. Mm. He takes care about every player, about every person from the club. So from the guy who sells the tickets in the stadium, from the best superstar, he's taking care about every team. Mm. He asks, how are you? If you are happy, how are you doing? And it's not easy to see that on that coach. So on first, he's a really good person. And after, he really likes soccer. He's <laughs> patient. Yes, he, he does. He lives on soccer 24 hours. So he analyzes every team. He reads every book from the best coach from Bielsa, from Guardiola, from Jurgen Klopp. Mm. He knows every, every tactic, every system. So if you have the, the level of the, of the soccer, and he mm. had, uh, he knows a lot. And after you are a good person and you know how to carry your team, you can only succeed. succeed. Mm. But this is Ricardo. But I said when Ricardo arrived to Tokushima, since now he changed a lot. Mm. He's just He's uh, how he was day by day. When I arrived to Tokushima, Ricardo had on mind, we have to go to J1, we have to go to J1, we have to go to J1. And it's, it's not as easy. So I start the game, and from the zero, Ricardo wanted to win the game. He was impatient. Mm. And that impatient is basic to create a team, to create a style. So on that time, he was impatient. After second year, Ricardo's second year in, uh, in Tokushima was my first year, mm. he thought, okay, maybe it's not easy to go to J1. So if it's not easy, I'm going to build a winner team. I'm going to build like a really philosophy team. Mm. And Ricardo built a philosophy, built a winner team. They had, for me, in my opinion, this year, worse player than two years ago, when was with Omotoyuki, Mm. Osaka, mm -hmm. the ball now is in uh, Yokohama Marinos. Yep. Was, mm -hmm. uh, was Ken, was me, was Sugimoto Taro, that was mm. for me. Was Maikawa, was Peter Utaka, mm. Barak, mm. was Yosaki, uh, he's now in Nagoya. Was super big team, mm. as big mm. as, But Ricardo, in that moment, he wasn't patient. He won every game from before the start game. He wanted to win. Mm. But he philosophy. He built a philosophy. Now he's spacing with the players and with worse players, in my opinion. Mm. He football since he arrived to Tokushima, in my opinion. But Ricardo, he likes rock and roll. He <laughs> likes children. So first year, he created a lot of chances with time, with this build up. So mm. maybe in Nagawa, I want to see What's Ricardo? What style? Mm. If this year Tokushima's style, like be patient, so mm. pass, you goalkeeper, or a team who can arrive to the other goal in 10 seconds. Mm. I want to see that was, that was philosophy this year. I don't know. I'm not sure. And something, um, something interesting he told me last night when I spoke to him. He said that it's not, it's not the best players but the right players. So it, you don't need the best, the very best players if they don't fit in to your way of playing football or your philosophy. And maybe, yeah, you just said there that maybe two years ago, three years ago, Tokushima, yeah, David Baral, you, there are lots of really, Jordi, Jordi Boyce, Kajikawa, many, many good players. But this year, I think, he said that he had not the best players, but the right players to play in his way of football. And it's funny because watching Tokushima this year, a lot of it doesn't really matter about the players. You take one player out, you replace them with another one. The system works the same. And I think maybe that's how you build a philosophy, right? Right, right, right. In Japan, I was, you know, some days ago when uh, Ehime's Kawai Kenta coach, he was like uh, like on fire, like uh, on fire, like he get fired. 
So I thought on that moment, what's the most important? Mm. It's dependent on the team. Like some things in Japan, because it's really new soccer, new sport in Japan, mm. they don't have, like for example, Barcelona has, or Ajax, or Dortmund, or something mm. from. So on this kind of team, which is the most important? What's the most important mm. for me to be a philosophy? So mm. even Ricardo didn't promote with Tokushima, but build that philosophy. For mm. me, he's a, and in Ekime, a team who has no philosophy this year. For me, the most important is to build that philosophy. After mm. that, maybe on result, of mm. course. But the most important is give to this club a philosophy. Mm. For me, that's why I was a little bit disappointed with uh, with Kifu, mm. because they had Okisam. They have many players like even with uh, winning less money, they they want to go to Kifu to play that chaka. Exactly. So you, you have that. You cannot lose that. You have mm. to build. You build better, better, and better to make this club bigger. Mm. That's why first year when I was in Tokushima when uh, when Okisam was was not a Gifu's coach. And when they start to pick really different players from before, and I was a little bit disappointed. Mm. Yeah, me t- I yeah, I never agreed with um with Oki leaving Gifu. I know Gifu were I know Gifu weren't doing so well in the league. They were down. But I think maybe we'll talk about um Ehime as well. I mean, there are lots of teams maybe in the lower half of J2 that maybe will not get promoted to J1, maybe ever. Like maybe yeah. Gifu, Ehime, I'm thinking maybe Kanazawa, Tochigi, Mito. And I sometimes think, why? Like, what is, what is the reason of the club? And I think that having a, an idea that Oki, yeah, Oki Takeshi, the football made players want to come. Like they made good players want to come and especially good young players because they saw, oh, well, Omoto played well, Furuhashi played well, Kai Kentaro played well. It's good to get them developed in a system. And I think maybe Ehime is the same. I, I don't understand... I know Ehime had a bad season, but really bad season. but so what? Like, <laughs> like, was did you did did anybody expect anything different? E- Ehime have very little money, I guess. They have very few people coming to the stadium. Maybe they have to think kind of a bit further, a bit longer in the future. Maybe keep. Kawaii Kenta for maybe two, three, four years, just so he can make the philosophy. I don't know. What what, what do you think? I think exactly the way you, you think. Because if you don't have the money, Ehime hasn't mm. had the money. You don't have like a big chaparta, the people doesn't go to the stadium. Mm. The people the people won't go to the stadium if the team play good. Mm. Of course, if the team win. But you know, before to build this this uh, supporter like like Matsumoto, you have to give them something. If you are yeah. not a winner, you are not gonna win many games because you don't have the money. You don't have these big players. You mm. have to give something. This mm. something for Saka. Mm. If you make a good, at least they are gonna go to the stadium. And especially if you don't have money to take good players, because always in the same level, other players are gonna go to other team because they mm. got better money. Yeah. Like Gifu, Gifu second year, many young players like they have the talent and they know if I go to other team, I'm not gonna play. Mm. This is not my style. Mm. If I want, if I want to succeed, I have to go to with maybe Gifu style with this coach. Like for me, for example, on first year from Kyogo, from Omoto, from Yushi, mm. if Gifu was other coach, they don't play. They mm. didn't play. Yeah. I'm quite sure. Yeah, because most of the coaches they won't result from the first day, and they want the strong players. They want this kind of player. Who, of course, I also like this kind of player, mm. but I love this young player with 
some different stuff, mm. ability with goal, with uh, like Kyogo, like uh, Yusi. So I lo- I really love to see I love to see that players on training on game how mm. they should see. With other coach they don't. So you create that you have to keep that because it's the key for these small things like Gifu, Ejime, Mito, or other things. Mm. Mm. I think, yeah, I completely agree. Um, I'm a bit, this year, uh, Yushi has been released by Gifu, which I'm quite sad about. Um, I kind of hope he goes to Kumamoto to go with uh, with, with Oki again, because I think he can still be uh, a good player. So CC, the last couple of seasons, you've had some like bad injury problems. Um, like being a foreign player in Japan, especially this year with the, the coronavirus and, and all the added pressure that that brings. How, how has this year been for you personally? Has it been difficult? Have you kind of just focused on Japanese study or have you, start, have you started to think about after the football career finishes? Like what, what's been your, your mind like this year? Well, to be honest, you know, in, in, in my career, I had many bad years. When I was mm-hmm. famous, we relegate from first division to second division. It was really hard. Also, I have some years, like I was all the year injury with the knee, with the tendon, with some problems. But especially this last two years in Japan was the hardest year in my life. Mm-hmm. Not soccer, about personality, mm-hmm. about everything, because... You know, I love Japan. I was really like I I try to give my best, my best mm. in in this in the pitch and also in the life. It's not easy, as you know, as a foreigner living in mm. Japan. Yes, it's not, it's not easy. But at the same time, I love. So I had a problem because I couldn't recover the injury, and well, I always say like you need something more than football. So mm. always in my life, because if football is going bad, if you don't have nothing. You are gonna mm. be you are gonna go down for mm. sure. So, but if you have something different, maybe the family, maybe one good book, maybe your friends, maybe some uh, drama, something like that. You need something always. Mm, mm. But in Japan, what I had though it was always soccer and Japanese. I was studying Japanese. I was adapting to the Japanese culture. But mm. you know, two years I couldn't play. I couldn't recover. So I knew. If I'm if I don't recover, it's gonna be my end as a mm. soccer player. But not only that, I'm not gonna live in Japan. So at the same time, I was sad because I couldn't get recover, mm. and I was really sad because I knew if I don't recover, I'm not gonna live anymore in Japan. Mm. So when I was maybe in Tokushima, I had some bad moments, but well, I was studying Japanese, so I could escape from the bad moments from soccer. <laughs> Mm. On that moment, because I couldn't escape from Saka, if I study at the same time, I said, "Well, oh, I'm studying, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna live in Japan." So I was depressed, depressed, and depressed, and everything was really sad because I couldn't go back to Spain. Mm. I had to in Japan because of Corona and these things, but at the same time, I can recover. I can put focus on study. So it was really a stress time. It was really, really, really hard time. So. So how did you get through it then? Because it must, because this year has been, it's been challenging for for everyone, but especially in those in those circumstances, in that situation, how how did you kind of cope with it? What what who did you speak to? What did you do to to get through? Well, in that moment, I always need the people. I always need a good conversation, a good talk. I need the, the love from the people to feel the kindness. And, you know, I was standing alone with the physical coach, but sometimes I, 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 I was to watch the training. And on that moment, always try Kenta. Mm. And some good, like, I'm waiting you, the team, I'm waiting you. How are you? How are your family? So on that moment, I got, like, new energy. Mm. But new energy wasn't enough because mm. I was alone without, without no one, without a good reason because the injury wasn't like going, going on, on the good way. Mm. So 
I could say like on like my limit. Sometimes I have the like big limit. I can I can keep. I can I can with many things, but I couldn't. But that's mm -hmm. why I I need to go back to Spain. Even when I came back to Spain, I didn't know if I'm gonna can go back to Japan. Mm. But I, I thought, okay, maybe I lose Saka, but but I win I win my life because mm. of that. I was really, really, really lost. Mm -hmm. I was really, and on that moment, I need my family, I need my friends, I need to get energy to the mm -hmm. next step, go back to the Japan again. So it was really, really hard. It was really difficult mm -hmm. was for me, to be honest. But you did come back onto the, the pitch in an away game at Giravan's Kitakushu. Uh, I think you came off, off the bench to play in that game. Like, how did that feel? Did that feel, did you feel, oh, great, I made it? Or did you feel sad that I'm not going to experience too many more feelings like this again? How, how did you feel? Well, you know, after one year and a half or something mm. like that, you know, before I go to, to Jirabans, to Kitakyusu, I felt my, my knee a little bit bad. Not a little bit, I really felt bad. Mm. So it was on Wednesday, and on Monday I wanted to speak with the coach and physical coach to say I I cannot mm. because I was really bad really I couldn't I couldn't work good. So when I got from the car and someone was watching to me, I thought okay I'm gonna work like I can do everything, but on my home, in my house in the car when nobody was looking to me, I was like wow. I can run, I can even work good. So on Monday, my plan was to speak with Kenta and said him, Oi, I'm bad again, I'm mm. sorry. It's not my tendon, now is the knee. I really want to play, but I can't. I really want to say him that. Mm. But he came to me and he said, hey, Sissi, I'm planning like uh, next Wednesday, I want you to play 20 minutes. And he was really happy. He was waiting me mm. and I didn't say him, like, I cannot. I couldn't say, I'm not ready again. I mm. injured him. I couldn't say him. So I said, okay, I'm going to keep my best. I'm going to go to home and make everything I can do just to come play 20 minutes. So on Tuesday, I got to the bus. I got to the plane and I couldn't work. In front of the people, I was working like, I can do everything. I'm 100%. I'm Cristiano Ronaldo or <laughs> something like that. Uh -huh. But when I got inside of the, my room, I knew I couldn't. So finally, I arrived Wednesday and I arrived to the stadium and I was really excited. I was really happy to see the environment, soccer environment. But at the same time, I knew I couldn't play. I couldn't play. So everyone was like, send me some message. Hey, sis, congratulations. Congratulations. Mm, 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 mm. Again, in the member. But I wasn't happy. I was really sad. So when I was in the warming up, I was like, I was amazing because I was happy, but at the same time, I was devastated. I was sad because I knew I can play. Uh -huh. So I wanted to play 30, 40 minutes, but I knew I can play only 10, five minutes. Mm. And I played 30 minutes and I didn't play bad. Mm, 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 mm. I was, my knee was something like that, something like that. And I knew I have to stop. So I couldn't be happy. Mm. I, I, I was the best. I was really sad, like I said. After one year and a half, you go back again to the pitch and you are not happy. And it was amazing because I couldn't play good. I couldn't run. So how you can play on that level in professional game? So it was amazing. So after that, on Thursday, Kenta came to me again and he said, okay, Sissy, I see you can play. And I was thinking, no, I cannot. <laughs> so he said, next game I wanted, it was Kofu, it was the home game. Mm. And Kenta said to me, Sissy, I want you to play 40 minutes. And everyone is waiting, you, the fans, the people, they are excited to see you in our stadium. And I thought, wow, I really want, but I don't know if I can. So mm. again, I, I was fighting with me. Because I knew I couldn't, but mm. I really wanted to play for, for Ekimes fan. Mm. But 
that moment, Saturday, I went to the hotel. I know I couldn't play. 40 minutes. He said 40 minutes. In my mind, 40 minutes was, was like three days playing soccer. <laughs> so uh, what got Corona. Mm. It was cancelled. And for that's me, right. it was... Yeah, that's right. Of course it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that moment, I thought, okay, this Corona saved me. But I have to be honest with Kenta and with mm. the people. I said, them, I cannot. I'm really sorry, but I have the knee like that. Mm. And they got a lot. And not only one day, four days in a row. And after more and more. And it was like two, two months ago. And I still mm. my knees. So imagine if I played on that day. It's <laughs> it was hard. It was really hard this year. So like if this isn't too personal, like what does what does your future hold do you want to co go back onto the pitch do you have you finished your career what's what's the situation now i really want to go back to the pitch and i'm gonna try to do but i don't know if my body is gonna it's gonna be okay again i'm gonna mm. try i don't know if it's maybe i would be after three four months but mm. i would recover and after that i will see if i can play again or not but I really want to enjoy maybe some training with the team. Mm. I don't mean. Mm. I don't care if it's J2, J3. I just want to go back to the pitch and enjoy soccer because these last two years and a half, I couldn't enjoy. Mm. And if I finish my career like that, you know, it's finished like, wow, what a way to finish. Yeah. What a way. I don't want to finish like that. But at the same time, I think in A, Every day is really hard if you cannot go back to the pitch for your mind. Mm. You won't go back to the pitch, but at the same time, sometimes you are destroying your mind. Mm. Because if I go on training, if I, if I have pain, after that, outside from football, you can enjoy the life. Yeah. And I really enjoy the life. I really enjoy a coffee with a, with a friend. I really enjoy a beer. I really enjoy a conversation. But if I, if I have pain, if I know, if I know tomorrow I'm gonna be bad for training, my mind is not good. Mm. And it's not how I want to work, and it's not good, of course. Come back to Gifu, man. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like, right. JJ, help us, help us go up, uh, or or go to Kumamoto with, with Oki. I think those two, those two places would would welcome you. Would say, come, come, come. <laughs> You know, I, I thought many times because uh, we spoke before about Tokushima. When mm. I got to Tokushima, I, I reached us. I said, I don't want to go to Tokushima because I was really, really happy on, in Gifu. Mm. About my life, about the players, about the coach. I was really happy and I was really enjoying. So I reject the first offer. But after that, they made me they give me a new offer. Uh, and you know, it's, it wasn't about the money. It was about like Tokushima come promote to J1. On that moment, yeah. there was thirst. Mm. So I, I wanted, wanted to play J1. So on that moment, I really want, I didn't want to go to Tokushima, but I thought, okay, if you want to play to J1, mm. and you are, if you don't do in maybe two, three, two years, it's going to be almost impossible. Mm. I really want, to do something with Kifu. I don't know if as a player, mm -hmm. as a worker, help him. I don't know, but I really want to help Kifu. And also Kifu can help me in mm. my life, like a sport mom, like something about soccer. They can help me a lot. Mm. Because these four years in Japan, when I was happiest, it was maybe the hardest, try the first year to adapt to Japan. But mm. it was, of course, with big difference. Mm. CC, come and be our sporting director. You can uh, be in, in charge of, of everything. Um, I've just got two more questions, CC. <clears throat> so when you played for Tokushima, you actually came to Gifu and played uh, against Gifu. How did that feel? I know after the game, you went to the supporters behind the goal and they gave you in particular, a good reception. Omoto was a little bit different, but 
Sorry. I was surprised at that. <laughs> I, was, I was surprised at that. I was surprised at that. I was a little bit disappointed as well. Um, but how did it feel playing against Kifu and then to get that kind of good reception after the game as well? Because, no for example, that kind of stuff doesn't happen in Spain, right? <laughs> the, the, the opposite happens, right? For me, it's, I made the best things in my career when I was playing in Valladolid, first division, two years. And I went to Recreativo de Huelva, or their team from the south, Santa mm. Catarina. What? Well, so when I came with the Recreativo de Huelva to Valladolid to play, I mm. thought that people are going they maybe they are not going to say me like bad things, but they are not going to do nothing special. Mm. But on the three minutes, I was playing and I was changed. So on that moment, this 30 seconds from the piece to the bench, everyone in the stadium stand up and start to clap me. Mm. So one of the best memories I have from Saka. And when I went to Kifu, again, the people gave me this, their kindness. They were really mm. kind with me. Mm. They how the people loved me on that moment. And it was, I was really surprised with that. And I was really happy. Maybe one of the best memories from Japan, maybe one of the best memories in my career. This from the supporter, but I didn't want to play on that game. I didn't want to play against Oki, against Fuku, because Fukumura was Fukumura, really close. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. I didn't want to play that game, to be honest. And especially the game I didn't want to play was second lap on Gifu was in a really bad moment. There was, I, I, I was maybe, they were Gifu 21, something like that in the table. Mm. They didn't, they, they needed to win on that mm. game. And I, I didn't want to play because I didn't want to do something but against Gifu, against Oki. Mm. And, that, and we won in the last game, in the last minute with, uh, uh, with additional remember? time. I, I, I remember oh. all those defeats, yeah. At that moment, I was, I was really like, uh, like uh, impressive about Gifu. I was because, you know, Gifu was a really bad moment. They need to win. And I thought maybe Gifu is going to lose uh, his style. They are going to give us the ball and they're going to play like small team. Mm. But Gifu came with the best players. They put mm. his best players and they tried to play Saka. And they were much better than us. Mm. Like they used to do, we used to do on Gifu. <laughs> They came in a really bad moment without confidence and they take the ball, they take his level, they take his style, his philosophy, and they were much, much better than Tokushima on that moment. Mm. They lost. But on that moment, I thought, wow, what a team. We can only say thank you for this, for this play. Thank you for this, this game. Mm. And I thought, wow, this is a philosophy. This is a mentality. I want to play mm. a game with Oki and with Gifu. <laughs> Last question, CC. Um, who do you still keep in touch with? Um, like, not uh, maybe. Obviously, you speak with Ricardo quite often, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez. But I know you were good friends with Fuku Takayuki Fukumura, who's now at Tokyo Verdi, and who is one of the best left backs in the in the second division. He's really, really good. Who do you who do you keep in touch with from either from Gifu or from Tokushima? I used to I used to speak with uh, Yuto, you know. Ah, because yeah, he's in uh, he's in mm. Thailand now, and he's play yeah he's playing really well these days actually yeah. Mm. I used to play. Sometimes we make a video with uh, Yoshinari Takagi. <laughs> yeah, he was. I have a scene when uh, Huik is Saka, and as uh. you know, he was uh, drinking a beer or something like that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Oh, Saka, and you put this this year with the beer. <laughs> yeah. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> it was like, like kind of God for me. <laughs> I used to be with Kim, with mm. Abe, with Fuku. Uh, Fuku came to Spain two years ago. Oh, so, wow. Oh, that's cool. Mm. He was in my house and we were together. And, uh, you know, I, of course, with Victor. Sometimes oh. I could make some. Because, you oh, know, really? Oh, that's cool. Uh. He doesn't like this uh, speak with the phone or video, but sometimes I want to call him and say, hey, 
I was I was Kumamoto's game as always. You play good, but you didn't win. Yeah. And he laughed. Yeah. Did, did yeah. tell him about the defense that he needs. He needs to coach the defense. Uh, that's, uh, that's good. That's good though because I think like it. I, life is more than about football, right? So you're gonna have these friends, even though maybe you only kind of knew kind of Yuto for a couple of years kind of face to face, but, and you only knew uh, Fukumura for a year or so in Gifford, but these kind of relationships, they last long after football, right? It's important to kind of find a place where you enjoy, not just playing, but also enjoy the environment you're in, right? It is really important. When you finish football or your world, after that, what is uh, the, the people, the friends, the, the memory? So I know even if after five years, I go back to Japan, I can meet uh, Yoshinari, I can meet uh, Fuku. We can oh. be together and speak about uh, Gifu's time. We can bring it together. And for me, this, this is life. This mm. is what makes me happy. Oh, exactly. And I think that, um, like, I assume, I think it will be the same for Ehime and Tokushima, but I know if you come back to Gifu, even as, even as a tourist, CC, even if you, even if you sit behind the goal and sit with those supporters, you'll get a good reception because, you know, it's the, the feeling of kind of the, not, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez last night said, feeling of building a family within a club. And I think that's kind of what happened, especially in that first year under Oki at Gifu, because maybe except <laughs> Omoto Yuki, sorry, Yuki, but maybe <laughs> everyone is still really popular. Like Yoshinari is popular. Victor is still popular. Tamori Daiki is very, very popular, even though he's very Zen. <laughs> he's very <laughs> kind of calm. <laughs> Kyogo is very popular. Koya like there's this kind of feeling that that team was just the perfect kind of team for Gifu's supporters at that time. Everything like connected like, really well. Mm. It was, it was a really surprise when I arrived to Japan and I, I saw that environment inside the dress room. Mm. We have made, not parties together, but uh, Sometimes, even uh, without the reason, we meet, we drink something together, we speak about the next game, mm. we have fun. And for me, it was lovely because mm. I didn't see Tokushima, I didn't see Nekime, that environment. But this environment was because of Yoshinari. He was like better and player, but he helped along to every player. Mm. In different ways. Always with him in, talk, in Yoshinari and with him, we talked in the funny, in the funny way. Mm. But we were working he worked a lot and he helped people, a lot of players. He helped a lot of Victor. And mm. They were like kind of rival, right? Because Victor was the goalkeeper. He was playing every game. But yes. Josina was helping him a lot. Mm. And also Namba, also Tamori, everything, the veteran players connect with the young players. Mm. And everyone was working a lot. And you know what? On that, on that season, I thought if we change two, three things, we can arrive to play off because we were much better than many different clubs. We played with Sonan and we were better than them. I remember yeah. that game it was amazing. It was three, three, something like that. Mm. Was Fukumura scored a header, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we a goal. The, mm. Who makes the assist was the central back. And yeah. Who scored the left back. Yeah. For me, that's that's the, like the title from Gifu's level on that time, how mm. we play. Mm. So I thought if we change two, three things, we can arrive far. We can do better. We can, because I spoke with Lotina, for example. And Lotina, asked, and Lotina said to me, hey, for me, the best team, who I really like him, my favorite team, is Gifu. And, you know, to hear that, it was amazing. Mm. And I Ricardo said, okay, you have to improve some things like defensive, but <laughs> yeah. if I want to see one thing in the TV, in J2, mm. is... And yeah. I, I, 
you know, it's amazing you can say that. It's amazing to hear that. So on that time, I thought, if we change two, three things, we really can arrive to play off. Mm. Because you see now the players, wow, what's a super team, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because they're all, all, like like I said, like Shoji, Kyogo, Yushi, Koya, Yu, uh, Victor at the back. I mean, <clears throat> that was the, a fantastic team, yeah. With lots of with lots of good memories as well. Um, Cece, thank you honestly. Thank you so much for for taking time of your uh, your New Year or Christmas and New Year holiday. Um, I hope you come back. Um, I hope you come back to Japan as a player first, but if not, a coach or someone just to watch the games as a tourist. Um, I think, yeah, I think it would be perfect for you to to come back here and uh and help gifu to be <laughs> to be honest um but yeah and um, thank you so much for for speaking to us it's really interesting and um yeah i hope you and your family are healthy and that you have a, a happy new year and then yeah maybe after corona finishes hopefully next year come back and uh yeah we'll uh, we'll meet up and uh yeah we'll have another chat okay Sure, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And, and I, I really want back, I really want to give back to Gifu's people, to, to Gifu's club something back because I got a lot from Gifu. I really got a lot from everyone in the city, from the president, from Okisan, from the players, from the supporter. So I don't know how, but I really want to give, give them something back. Of course, on that moment, I gave my 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I guess it's enough. But I have inside of me, like I hey, said, you got more than you gave. Mm. So give more to them. So I don't know the way, but I will do. Of course, I will do. Good. We are. Well, we are gonna. We're gonna wait for you, and uh, you'll you'll come out here and help us. Cece, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure.